we're going to try a slightly harder acceleration problem again. This one is an acceleration due to gravity question, so hopefully you are familiar with the fact that all objects accelerate at the same rate due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared down. So here's our question. A ball is thrown off a building. If the ball is thrown up at 5 meters per second and lands 3 seconds later, what is the height of the building and b by the impact velocity of the ball? So, I've made a diagram, which I can't recommend highly enough. Students who have trouble often fail to make diagrams. Here's the ball, it's thrown up and it comes down. What we're trying to find from part A is the height of this building. Obviously, in this case, the ball is going up and then it comes back down. We need to define a direction. So I'm going to say let up be positive. So I'm going to say let up be positive. Now, for my givens, uh, same as always, the big five, A, V1, V2, delta D, and delta T. What is the acceleration? Well, that is just 9.8 meters per second squared, and it is always down. As the ball goes up, gravity is down. When the ball is at the top, gravity is still down. As the ball falls, gravity is down, making it speed up. A is 9.8 meters per second squared down. And since I have said up will be positive, hopefully you can see why in this case A should be negative 9.8. But A is not always negative 9.8, it's always 9.8 down. Whether it's positive or negative depends on you. Uh, V1 is up. Take a look in the question. The ball is thrown up. So V1 is positive 5 meters per second. It's a good habit to always get in the habit of putting positives or minuses. V2, we don't know. Delta D is the height of the building. It's what we're trying to find. And the time is three seconds. Now for part A, we are trying to find D and we don't care about V2. So for part A, which equation are we going to use? We're going to use the one that does not have V2, which is equation number three again. Delta D equals V1 T plus one half AT squared. I dump in my numbers and my units, five meters per second times three seconds plus half, negative 9.8 meters per second squared times three seconds squared. I can see the seconds are going to cancel out, giving me a meters, which is good. And over here, the second squares will cancel out with the second squared. So that works out quite nicely. We end up with an answer of negative. So it's going to be 15 minus all this stuff. It's going to be negative uh, 29.1 meters. What does that mean? Well. Negative makes sense. Negative in this case means down. The ball started at the top of the building and ended up here, so it's displacement. Remember, this D is displacement, it's not distance. The formula has not figured out how high it goes, how far it's gone, any of those things. All it's told us is that it ended 29.1 meters below where it started. The question, though, says, what is the height of the building? So, the building ball fell 29 meters, the building must be 29 meters high. The building is 29.1 meters high. And that's my answer to A. Part B says, what is the impact velocity of the ball? What is the speed the ball has when it hits the pavement, not a second later? Okay, so the impact velocity will definitely not be zero, because it will be zero after it hits the ground and has stopped, just as it's about to hit the ground. So our givens haven't changed, except this time, now for part B, we are looking for V2. The best equation to use would be equation 2, which does not have D, just in case we have messed up our answer to part A. Part B won't be messed up. So for part B, I'm going to use equation number 2, V2 equals V1 plus A times T. I don't have a lot of room, but this is very simple. V1 is 5 meters per second plus 9.8 times 3 seconds. Sort of running out of room. 9.8, of course, is negative. So it works out to be 5 minus 
3 times 9.8, which works out to negative 24.4 meters per second. Therefore, the final velocity is 24 meters per second down. And we're done. Notice again that it doesn't matter how high it went. I didn't care how much distance it covered. For some reason, students like to find out how high it went and then start again to figure out how far it fell from the very top. It's all extra work. I don't know why people do that. Just follow the same system. Write down all five givens. Which one do you need? Which one do you not care about? Pick the formula. Dump it in. As long as you have your signs right, the answer will pop in a problem.